you know, I worked with Baz Luhrmann on the get down. And now I'm sort of a consultant on this Elvis movie. There's a lot of stuff about Baz Luhrmann to say he's an amazing character. But one of the things is he's very steeped in research. So in the Elvis movie, I haven't, obviously I haven't seen it yet. He's still cutting it. But Elvis and Black people is a huge part of the narrative. It has to be, right? It's a huge part of the cultural dialogue. So I just spent a lot, I spent a lot of time interviewing Black people who knew Elvis and finding Black newspaper accounts about Elvis and, and seeing how in the 50s, Black people dealt with Elvis and, and, and those who knew him. And I found quite a few. I know we found a Black guy, I hope he's still alive, who grew up with him in Tupelo, Mississippi. We found several people who knew him as a teenager and knew him as an adult. And so that's going to inform some of the storytelling. And what do they say about Elvis? That he was this weird little white kid. <laughs> what, what I got from it, from the people, was that Elvis was an outlier. Number one thing about Elvis is that how poor he was. His father, you know, was in jail for... I think writing bad checks at one point. So they lived next to the black folks, where the poor black people were. If you ever go to, you have to go to Tupelo, Mississippi, you go down, there's a famous Elvis statue. There's the, there's the drugstore that Elvis used to hang out at and got his first guitar. And there's now a big sporting arena. But what a sporting arena was, was the black entertainment section. You know, it was the Beale Street. And then up this hill was where black folks lived. And Elvis was one of the white families in the black neighborhood especially for about two or three, I think nine or 10. So these guys have stories of him going to black tent shows. The little black weird white kid at the black tent show. So, you know, I'm not going to get into all of the stuff. There's so much to say about Elvis. But one thing that's very clear is that he was attracted to this, and not actually soul music, but to church music. And then there's another thing I didn't know about. You've always read these things, well, Elvis went to black churches when he was a teenager. Well, we found the black church that he went to. And it was a church run by a guy named Brewster, Reverend Brewster, who was the biggest black minister in Memphis. And his church was basically, I walked it, you know, less than a mile from the white church that Elvis went to with his mother. And not only was this guy, this church accessible, Brewster had a radio show on the white, on the white station in Memphis. Um, and it was a thing for white kids in 1951, 49, 40, I mean, early, to go hang out in the back of this black church and hear the singing. And Because I always had the idea that maybe Elvis was this singular, but apparently that was a kind of teenage rebellion that was going on in a very segregated time and place. This is really before the official civil rights movement really starts. So this Reverend Brewster was kind of a, crossover figure in Memphis. And that attracted white teenagers, one of whom was Elvis, and Elvis sometimes it took his girlfriend. It just, it just gave me a different perspective on his journey. Um, and so I, I, th- I believe some of that will end up in the movie. And when's that movie out? Uh, June of next year. So we're going to get a Baz Luhrmann Elvis film. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Someone, someone said to me, well, you're working on the Elvis thing. You know, that's gonna, that's a, you're a traitor to Black people. I'm like, really? Is that what this is about? I think the Elvis thing, what I'm, gonna, what I'm hopeful of that comes out, and then in some of the, that the Elvis movie is an opportunity to have a real discussion about Elvis and Black culture and, in why, and, why, and how the interaction, because I think one of the things that people are doing now is sort of taking art and politicizing art in a way that doesn't, it's a misunderstanding of how art works. And when I say that to say that, if you're going to say that Eminem, you know, takes Black culture, then what do we, what's the discussion about, you know, Quincy Jones going to study with Nadia Boulanger in Paris? What does that say about Miles Davis listening to Stockhausen? And, you know, and using all, at the highest level of art, the greatest artists take from wherever they feel inspired. So it's in Spain, one of my favorite Miles Davis album, is all based on Spanish motifs and Spanish instrumentation mixed in with his own style. Artists take for whatever, always. Now, the, the, you, you can make an argument about the economic injustices of how the music industry works, because almost all Black artists in America work in some form, not all, but the great work in some form in conjunction with European art forms, whether it's 
gospel music is a derivation of coming out of European choral music that was then that we took and and, and refractured the same way that if you listen to Prince, Prince, especially his first like Dirty Mind era into 1999, is very in- influenced by uh, new wave music, the way he uses uh, instrumentation and keyboard, and and that was part of his one of his palettes, if you will. I just don't. I hate when this discussion gets so reductive around race and, and culture because I don't feel like it's not a one way street, and in fact, that's the beauty of art that someone like Ellington. Or, and I'm using people, I think, at the highest level of, of art in America, take from wherever and make it their own. Yeah, like Picasso took from African art. Absolutely. The issue becomes when people want to deny that. But all you have to do is go see some of Picasso's work hanging up, and you go, oh, that looks a lot the, the way he's had the, the heads, and the way the eyes are situated. Oh, he watched, he saw this work, or he saw these sculptures, and he took from there. And he, and so that's that, but that's the way art always works. Everybody starts with the influence because you have to see possibility. I don't think it's necessary to always have your icon be someone of your race. I think that that's kind of actually reductive. We are human beings and we take from whatever moves us. 